There are at least three ways to build most EDH decks. Strong, strong, strong. Fun. And mean. Let's look at the strong, fun, and mean ways that I would build Oscar the Reconstructor, and the video starts right now. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters who power our channel. Check out our Patreon for monthly giveaways, exclusive content, and even a starring role in our fanfight series. Link in the description below. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel or Magic. I am Joel. Today we're going to talk about Oscar the Reconstructor and the three ways that I would build this commander. But before I do, if you would go down there, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. Let's take a look at this commander. Oscar the Reconstructor. I know it sounds like I'm saying Oscar, but I am saying Oscar. I'm just saying it very quickly. One white, one red, two other for a legendary giant artificer. 4-4 four, four in Vigilance. Pay one, sack an artifact. Target creature you control gets plus two, plus O oh until end of turn. X, tap it. Exile an artifact with mana value X from your graveyard. Create two tokens that are copies of the exiled card. Activate only as a sorcery. Two things I really like about this commander. One is an outlet for artifact sacrifice. Sacrificing things can be very strong, especially when it's only limited by how much mana you have. The other great part about this is recursion. Paying X, which is equal to the CMC or mana value of the artifact in your graveyard, to exile it and get two copies onto the battlefield is very strong. For the strong way that I would build this commander, I want to go scrapyard strategy and I want to have artifacts in our deck. I want to have the deck filled with artifacts that when they die or when they come back, they have abilities for us. For the fun strategy, I want to play a lot of artifacts that can trip. So in red and white, two colors that traditionally don't draw cards very well, we can draw a lot of cards through Oscar. And for the mean way, we're going to play a nope strategy and go with a little bit of a pillow fort and just have a lot of cards that when they have a second version of that card on the battlefield, get even more brutal at keeping your opponents from winning. Let's look at the strong way. This is what I'm talking about with the strong way. When it enters the battlefield, Solemn Simulacrum is going to go search for a basic land, put it onto the battlefield tapped, and then you shuffle. And when it dies, you get to draw a card. So when you sack it, you're drawing a card. When it comes back as double with Oscar, if you want to do that, you go get two more lands. Solemn Simulacrum sort of sums up the entire strategy that I want to take for the strong base, which is having cards, artifacts specifically, that enter the battlefield, do a thing, die do a thing when they come back they do that thing again that's very very pow powerful and you'll get a ton of value mycosynth wellspring when it enters the battlefield or is put into a graveyard search for a basic land reveal it put it in your hand again mana fixing mana ramp go get lands land search in colors that typically do not do that duplicate when it enters the battlefield you can exile target non-token creature so six mana exile any creature have it sacrificed to Oscar. activate Oscar's ability for six, bring back two duplicates, exile two creatures. This is where I want to be living as we are constructing the Reconstructor's deck. Hammer of Nizan, when it enters the battlefield or any other equipment enters the battlefield, you can automatically attach that equipment to a creature you control. Bringing this one back from the graveyard isn't exactly the best interaction because you are going to have to sacrifice one of those tokens because this is legendary. But I wanted to use this artifact to highlight the fact that it still is very valuable to be able to recur a card like Hammer of Nizan if it gets removed by just paying the four again with oscar's ability exiling it from your graveyard and creating a token of that hammer right back onto the battlefield i like treasure keeper a lot because when it dies you're revealing cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-land card with converted mana cost three or less and then you get to pay that for free so bringing that back in twos getting that ability twice the next time these treasure keeper dies i really like this card in this deck it can search up some of your best mana rocks some of your best removal if you're looking for cmc three or less you can definitely find removal on that cmc worm coil engine this one's just nutty it dies you get the two three threes you recur it it dies you get the oh, oh my god this one just comes back so many times as a big six six death touching life linker it just keeps recurring keeps being obnoxious and i definitely think that if we're playing a scrapyard strategy you want 
worm coil engine ancient stone idol this is very interesting this is the second time i've used this for one of these strixhaven commander 2021 commanders but i do think that this is very valuable in this deck it is 10 mana to recur but the first time you cast it it's one less for each attack and creature you can either do it on your attack or your opponent's attack and when it dies, which is the part that I really care about, you get to create a 6-12 with Trample. So you bring it back as a 12-12 with Trample again. You have it die. You've got two of those to tokens being created. The next time that these things are dying, I really like these that replace themselves as they go to die the next time or as they die the first time when you sacrifice it with Osgur. And then Mimic Vat, just being able to have two Mimic Vats on the battlefield is wildly powerful. One Mimic Vat is already ridiculously powerful and having two for the low cost of three mana through Osgur is just ridiculous. That's the strong way that I would build this. Let's look at the fun way and look at some cantrips. So cantrip is MTG slang for drawing a card, basically, and that's what we want to be doing with these artifacts. You're always going to get plus two, plus oh, until end of turn on a creature you control by sacrificing any artifact. It doesn't matter if it's a big or a small one. So we can play some of these smaller ones onto the battlefield for two mana. When it enters the battlefield, you draw. When it dies, you draw a card. If you want to recur it, you get to draw two more cards for two mana because you're recurring it as two different tokens. I think that this strategy could be really good to keep your hand full over the course of a long game and make sure that you've got a lot of powerful stuff to cast. Chromatic Star here presented in the most high definition art that I think exists. <laughs> One mana when it's put into a graveyard, draw a card, sacrifice it. It can fix your mana. You can sacrifice it that way. You can sacrifice it with Oscar to give something plus two plus oh. You can bring it back. Those die. You draw more cards. This is where I want to go with this strategy. Terrarian, again, into the graveyard from the battlefield, draw a card. Sack it, draw cards. Bring it back, sack them, draw cards. This is sort of this chain of like, you're pumping your creatures plus two, plus oh, and you're drawing cards. You're keeping your hand full. That's what I want to do with Oscar. The two implements that are in these colors, I really like too, because when, again, when they go into the graveyard from the battlefield, you draw, you recur them, you pay one, you sack them again, plus two, plus oh. Oscar's got this nice little churn of drawing cards and growing your creature's power. And in a pinch, one damage to target player, you're never going to do that. Don't even worry about that. Implement of improvement, same kind of thing. When it's put into the graveyard from the battlefield, draw a card. You know the loop already. That's what we want to do. So let's look at some heavier hitters. And Retributive Wand is great here. When it's put into a graveyard from the battlefield, it deals five to any target. A Planeswalker, a trouble, uh, troublesome creature, a player. It dies, deal five damage, bring it back, sack it, deal another five, sack the other one, deal another five. Retributive one for just three mana plus however much it costs you to activate all the Oscar activations you need. It represents 15 damage. That's not bad. Nothing to shake a stick at. I think it's a fun artifact to include in here. And summoning station. If we're going to be having artifacts put into the graveyard from play, we might as well have summoning station on the battlefield so we can tap it in response, create a 2 2. That thing goes into play. It untaps. We're ready to create another one. Just having a permanent on the battlefield that can create an army of 2 2s for you as your artifacts are getting naturally sacrificed seems really good to me and it it in and of itself is an artifact so if you can sack it pay seven recur it you'll have two of them your army is growing twice as fast every time an artifact dies aetherworks marvel is very interesting in this and i think it's a great inclusion in the fun aspect of this deck whenever a permanent you control is put into the graveyard you get an energy you need six energy to activate this but pay six energy and tap it look at the top six cards of your library you can cast a card from among them without paying its mana cost free spells thank you very much you're already going to have a lot of stuff in this deck going to the graveyard that's kind of what you want you want it to go to the graveyard so that you can get double value out of it or further value out of it aetherworks marvel is going to take advantage of the fact that we're going to have things die and that is free spells for us in the long run that's the fun way that i would build this deck let's look at the mean way and just go nope all right, so this one's not going to be very fun to play against, but it may lead to some really dirtily games that you eventually win or everybody concedes and they just go home and you win by default. Whenever a creature comes into play, if there are two or more other creatures in play, set that creature aside. If Portcullis leaves play, put the creature into play 
under its owner's control. So things are going to get exiled. Porculus goes away. Those creatures get to enter the battlefield. If you can get Osgur and one other creature onto the battlefield, no one, none of your other opponents can play more creatures. Osgur can hopefully swing through and maybe win through commander damage with this artifact. Plus, again, it's an artifact, so it can be recurred. So if they do remove it, just bring it right back with Oscar and bring it back in double gonna be harder to remove that way in this kind of strategy you want to be attacking with one creature your oscar you maybe want to go voltron with this strategy you maybe want to put some big flying you know six six huge beater in the air but you only want that one creature attacking during combat you only want one creature blocking so that it can't be ganged up on i think silent arbiter is a great artifact inclusion in this again it's an artifact it can recur back you'll notice that in this video i've only had artifacts as my suggestions and i think that's kind of where you need to be sitting with osgur you want to maximize the amount of artifacts in this deck so that you can take advantage of his abilities crawl space that's the same kind of thought process. No more than two creatures can attack you each combat. You want to really limit the channel of attack. You don't want to be attacking with much. You don't want them attacking you with much either. You can also go the pillow fort route and go with Norn's Annex. Creatures can't attack you or a planeswalker you control unless their controller pays a white mana or two life for each of those creatures. So if they're not in white, they've got to pay two life every time they attack. This is a card that gets way crazy when you've got two of them on the battlefield if you've brought it back with Osgur the Reconstructor, I think that this is a great strategy to go with that whole pillow fort kind of feel where it's like, just don't attack me. Just leave me alone. I don't want you to be over here with me and my giant artificer. I've talked about one big dumb creature pushing through. Darksteel Juggernaut might be that creature for you. An indestructible power and toughness equal to the number of artifacts you control. Like I said, I've already maximized artifacts in this build. That's what we want to be doing. So the power and toughness of this creature should be way high and it does have to attack however it's indestructible but we can still sack it sack it bring back two now we've got two indestructible juggernauts that just keep getting bigger and bigger as we play more artifacts onto the battlefield they're both counting themselves that's the kind of creature that you want to be attacking through with this to fulfill that silent arbiter role of one creature attacking how about a big dumb indestructible thing preferably it has trample look for creatures that have some avoidance or have some trample so the damage is going through regardless but dark steel juggernaut because it's an artifact may be a great way to go platinum angel might be that creature too its power is not going to be as high but you can't lose the game and your opponents can't win the game this is a hell of a creature your opponents have to remove it so that they can win and with oscar if they do remove it again just bring it back and bring it back in double so that you've got two they've got to now deal with you've prolonged the game even longer just like you can do with Platinum Empyrean. Eight mana for an 8-8, eight, eight, your life total can't change. All right, let's just have this on the battlefield. If they do deal with it, we'll bring it back. We'll have two of them. Our life total still can't change. Maybe we're just closing the game out through that. We can't lose. Opponents can't defeat us, especially if we just keep reconstructing everything. I think that this would be a really mean way to play. And if you want the utmost in mean, Phyrexian Revoker, activated abilities of sources with the chosen name that you choose when this card comes into play, they can't be activated. So Phyrexian Revoker is going to shut down a lot of cards. And if they do deal with it, bring it back. Have two of them shut down two cards completely. That's a strong, fun, and mean ways that I would build Osgur the Reconstructor. Let's close the book. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know which cards I left out and let me know how you're going to build this artificer. I know that there's a lot of hype around this commander. I'm personally very hyped to build it. If you liked the video, hit that like button on your way out. If you didn't hit that dislike button before you go. Other than that, I'm tapped out and I'll catch you later.